Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's episode is a little bit about my column in the latest QST, the July QST. And in this first article here, I am trying to help someone who wants to measure the attenuation loss of um, his antenna cable. So what he wants to do is put some power in at the bottom and, and put a power meter at the top with the dummy load. Now if you have to climb to some high spot, that, that's pretty difficult. There is an easier way. And the easier way is to just disconnect the antenna from the coax, leave it hanging. And then use your um, antenna analyzer, and almost all antenna analyzers offer this option. Set it at the frequency you want, which is in this case, I believe, uh, the 2 meter band, about 146 uh, megahertz. And use your antenna uh, analyzer to uh, actually measure the so-called return loss. Uh, of the coax. Note that it has to be open at the other end. Oddly enough, it doesn't matter whether it's open or closed. All the energy going down that antenna will be reflected. Okay? All, whether it's open or closed. Now if it's 50 ohms, the energy will go be absorbed and you will have zero return loss. So that's not helping you learn about your coax. So leave it either open or closed. Now, as it turns out, there's a phase difference in the return, whether it's open or closed, but we're not doing anything with phase differences. We're dealing with the magnitude of the power that goes out and the power that comes back. So you attach your uh, antenna analyzer at the uh, shack end of the coax. You've got it unplugged from the antenna and just hanging loose, okay? And you measure the return loss. Now the return loss is your antenna analyzer is going to throw some energy out and it's going to measure the amount that comes back. Okay? If you do this on a per second basis, it's power. Okay. Power out, power back. Now, you'll see a loss and at 146 megahertz, it doesn't really matter what cable you use, there's going to be a fair amount of loss. Now, as it turns out, LMR 240, which is a very nice piece of cable made by Times Microwave, uh, this cable would be made more for HF use because uh, its loss per 100 feet at um, 146 megahertz is about 3 dB. In other words, you lose half your signal. So if you send out 100 watts, 50 watts gets to the antenna. If you short that out or open it, 25 will get back. Okay, so you will show a uh, minus 6 dB uh, return loss. Now that's two-way. We're only interested in one way, so chop that in half so you can tell immediately it's 3 dB. Now I tried this on a 10-foot piece of um, LMR 240. Now unfortunately there was a typo that worked its way in in the editorial process and I'm given the opportunity to review this before it goes to press and right there is the error. Okay, the very bottom line and it says for example, I used a Reg Expert AA230 zoom to measure the return loss of a hundred foot section. Okay, now every other reference in here is to a 10 foot section. That number 100 should be 10. It was a 10 foot section. Now how accurate is my reading going to be of return loss on a mere 10 foot section? Well, it's multiple wavelengths long at uh, 150 megahertz. I think I set it for 146. But if we look in here, and these are the actual measurements obtained right here, we see, uh, and I'll put it under the overhead. This is the uh, rig expert. This is a photograph of the screen at 146 megahertz. We're showing a return loss of 0.81. Now we show an SWR of 22. Shouldn't it be infinity? Well, yes, it should, except that there's loss in the cable. 
So the SWR measurement method assumes that any power that goes out hits the antenna and we're only looking at the reflected power. So as I have mentioned many times before, a lossy cable will give you a better than truth uh, value for SWR. So here's 0.81. So divide that in half and you get 0.4 of, the, of uh, the loss going in one direction on a 10-foot cable. Okay, so if you have a 10-foot cable, so if you have a 10-foot cable with a return loss of, what is it there? 0.8. An 8 dB, that would mean that the attenuation, 10 foot attenuation, is 0 0.4 dB. Okay, so a 100 foot attenuation would be 4 dB. 4 dB. Now, remember, we're measuring only a 10-foot section. We've got losses in the connectors and things like this. This is not a real good way to get um, your loss interpolated to 100 feet. I'm going to say 4 dB plus or minus. Now, if you go to Pasternak's website, they sell, well, everything under the sun, including bulk cable and um, they say that the uh, attenuation is 3 dB. Okay, we're 1 dB off, which equals 1 sixth of an S unit. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just not. This, again, was an experiment using an extremely short, short piece of cable. May have been measured a little bit wrong, but we end up with uh, 4 dB, which is very close to the 3 dB uh, given in the specifications. Okay, so this is a way that you can measure some very important things about your antenna cable. Simply, okay, so this is a way that you can measure some very important information about your transmission line if you can get to the point where it is connected to the antenna. Now, if it's easier to take the whole antenna down like it's a dipole. You just, you got to pull it, you let it come down, you unhook the cable, um, set it on something so that the end isn't right on the ground. You know, it's a few inches off or something like that. Or short it. And it will not matter, since this is coaxial cable, it doesn't matter what it's next to, whether it's next to metal objects or anything like that, because everything, you know, what happens inside the coax stays inside the coax, okay? So you can very quickly measure the actual return loss, divide that by two to get the actual attenuation and then you can scale that to 100 feet and see if it matches what you've got uh, in various reference sources for the amount of attenuation per 100 feet. Now remember, the attenuation changes with frequency, so um, if you're doing this for two meters, 146 megahertz is a good frequency to use. Now, um, LMR 240, which is made by Times Microwave, uh, it's made in America, it's one of the best, uh, it's a premium coax. Now you can get more expensive coax from abroad, but uh, LMR, which is from Times Microwave, is a premium coax. And so when I use the term lossy to refer to this premium coax, it's possible to say, now wait a minute, this is the best coax, I think, that America makes, so how can it be lossy? Well, it is lossy. I mean, you look at the specs, you lose 3 dB in 100 feet of it. That's half. Remember, 3 dB is one half of the power. You start with 50 watts, which is a usual uh, mobile radio used in a base station. 50 watts, so 25 watts gets to the antenna. Now, if you leave that end open, of that um, 250 watts, 25, 12.5 watts, it's going to make it back. So you, you figure the one-way attenuation for that is uh, 3 dB per 100 feet. 
That's lossy. You've lost half your signal. How can you say that is not lossy? That is lossy. By the way, the word lossy is not in the dictionary. It's a purely made up radio engineering term. But it is in fact a lossy cable like all cables at that frequency unless you start to get really big. Okay, but for an RG58, RG8X size uh, cable, um, it does pretty good. Okay, it's not that much different from say RG8X or something like that. If you have a situation where you're concerned about it being lossy, use LMR400. If you're doing moon bounce work or something like that, use LMR600. I mean, the sky's the limit on what you can pay for cable. So there you have it. I just wanted to provide a little bit of feedback on that first article in the July uh, QST and show you how easy this is a method that can kind of get you in the ballpark. Um, now we were within a tenth of a dB. Get you in the ballpark of how lossy your cable is. And so there it is. If you've watched this far, I thank you for su doing so and suggest that you take a look at uh, decastlercom support for ways that you can help this channel keep thriving. And if you uh, find anything there that works for you, go right ahead. If you don't find anything there that works for you, well, just put a comment in there and say thank you. If you find an error, and I do make errors, Please be gentle. I'm an old soul. My brain's been beat up after 71 years. And say, I think this is an error, but also say, I think this is the right error, right answer because of this. Okay, so reply with what the solution should be, and then give me a reference. Good references are ARRL books. I'll even take Wikipedia. Um, or if you have a radio reference book or something like that, that would really be helpful. I've had people say, your article is all wrong, and you should apologize to the people involved. And I'm looking at this going, OK, what's wrong with the article? And prove it. So. That's what I would say. If you just want to comment on YouTube, say what you want. Uh, if you're going to make a bigger deal of it, then tell me what it should be and provide me with some proof. And make sure you actually understand. I think the person who said that um, conflated um, return loss with forward attenuation. You end up with a doubling in there. So there you have it. Until we next meet, 73.